Journal entry of a criminal potion brewer. Dated the 9th of Unity, 1989 years after the fracturing of the firmament. Recovered on the 21st of Flame in the same year. I sent out another round of applications for an apprenticeship today, everywhere from Silver Moon Shores to Byston Well. Father keeps admonishing me for working at the bookshop this long, saying it won't last forever and I'll never make enough money to do anything with my life. If only he knew how much I actually made. Nevertheless, I know this gig can't last forever. I've learned a lot under Grandma Agnes, and she's opened many doors for me in my studies. But, the fact remains that we're involved in a dangerous trade, and I could get hurt, arrested, or killed at any time. A mix of caution and luck have got me this far, but the further down this path I walk, the dimmer it gets, and I begin to see the strange shadows lurking on the path's edge, waiting for me to stumble so that they may pounce. It's not easy for a magician to find honest work in this kingdom. There are only so many well-paying jobs to go around, and they're difficult to get if you don't belong to a family of some importance. I suppose I could go through the hard work of setting up my own potion shop up in Havenwood, but the legal potion trade is much harder to find success in than its illegitimate counterpart. And I can't shake the feeling the other girls would see it as a betrayal. In the depths of my heart, I worry I may need to leave the city to find work that is both safe and reliable. But where would I go? Kulopolis, run by an imperial regiment that preys on the citizens they claim to serve and protect. Fremery, home of the largest Gwenian Cathedral in the Mendabardian Kingdom, as well as a population of witch-hating zealots. Or maybe the Isles of Quaburn to the southeast, which could be subject to an invasion at any time if the Eastern Kingdoms grew bold. One way or another, I'm sure it will all work out for me. If there's anything that could be said of your friend Tabitha Swamp Fox, it's that I'm a cunning and adaptable creature who catches on to things quickly. But until that day comes, it seems I'll be stuck arguing with my father by day and selling contraband potions by night. So, you make your way into the Havenwood Forest. Do I still have- nope. <laughs> Ed makes his way to Havenwood. Uh, no. Let me... <laughs> oh, what a coincidence! <laughs> this is the Tsukihime background, by the way. Um, oh my god. So, uh, Eliza, you've, you've maybe not traveled by... Uh, I have a feeling Eliza doesn't travel by boat often. Eliza doesn't travel yeah. often. Well, typically when you want to... Yeah, so what do you do when you want to talk to the Wander song, uh sibling that you uh that you have a contact yeah, well, do you just write uh, write to them a lot well i think uh i can double check this on my character sheet but i think we said she just kind of pretends to be normal acad yeah uh that's actually what i have verbatim she pretends to be a normal academic yeah so uh so i imagine she's like at the college sometimes yes that makes sense um, so, you make your way out to the exterior of the Wandersong Mansion, which I took from the Tsukihime remake, coming out later this year. Are we sponsored by... <laughs> no, if I could be sponsored by Nasu, I would probably say no, <laughs> but... <laughs> uh... So, um, Eliza. Eliza, who does not, who can't look people in the eye when she talks to them, is like, yeah, I know a guy. And then she takes you to this big ass mansion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's a, it's a little weird. Um, I mean, we expect the weird, so it's like, whatever. Um, you do see Valencia's younger sister, um, appears to be sneaking out of the mansion as you enter. Do I know her sister's name? Uh, yeah, it's Arya. Arya Wondersong. Hey, hey, hey Arya. Hi. Uh, is your sister here? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going out. 
She seems very nervous. Uh, are you... Okay. We are 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 the rest of us with her? Uh, are are yeah. the rest of us there? Yeah. Uh does anything like seem off about her that like maybe um She seems to be sneaking out of the house. <laughs> I guess uh, I'll I guess while Eliza's here, I'm gonna something seems off, so I guess I'll just like tail her for a bit. While Eliza and Amira, I guess, are here to talk with the sister. Uh okay. Uh she starts walking deeper into the woods. Do you follow? All right, I'll follow. All right. Uh, I feel like uh, she's a little on edge. I think that'd be a roll to see if you can uh, tail her. Uh, would that be like a prow, or would that be like like a like maybe like a finesse for like following? Or uh, let's look at the descriptions. Um, so a prowl would be prowl about unseen and tr- yeah, a prowl about unseen. Yeah. That sounds like yeah, yeah. Maybe. yeah. All right, so I'll roll for Prowl. Yeah, and it's just the default. Um, Four. You make some... You snap on a few twigs, which doesn't give away your position, but makes her more nervous, and she starts to run faster. Uh, she's going deeper into the woods to the point that you feel like you might have a hard time getting back if you keep following, but you can still definitely follow. You, she still doesn't know you're following her. Is it possible? Hold on, let me look at what I have on me. Cause I can. Can I still declare anything based on last time? Um. So I have space for one thing. Yeah, you're, um, you're still technically kind of in the free play thing, so we're not really in a mission right now. Um. Would I still have what I have left over from last time, or no? Yeah, I, I'd say you could say you have whatever you want on your sheet, honestly. I'm pretty loose about this. Um, is there anything on my items that I can... Let me look at the description for this. What are you looking at? Arcane implements. Because I'm trying to see if there's anything that I could use to kind of, like, make a path for myself back. Uh, a, well, it does have a pouch of black salt. Yeah. I feel is like it, that might is, be Is it something I'd be able to see with? Like, like if I were to look for it, could yeah, I see it? Black salt on dirt. That'd be a little weird. Um. Hmm. You might have, like, do you have what any... Because this is a forest, right? I can I, I can just mark the trees, right? You could do that. I would, I would even say if you have, like, a bread roll or something you took for you for, like, dinner or something before you left, I could say you could just do that we can just say it's in your inventory uh actually let's i'll just to take like um what did i say my large weapon was i don't even it remember. was a bad um with like a single nail in yeah it. it was a bat with a single nail you specified okay so i use oh yeah 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 i'll use that nail to like mark the tree like like maybe draw like a triangle just, shape on just the tree. like scraping at the tree with the bat i love it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so i would freaking so out would this teenage that. girl as she hears this ominous scraping of wood behind yeah. her <laughs> <laughs> this is some slasher shit yeah, so I'll use yeah. that to kind of, like, mark the way back so I don't get lost. Okay. Um, you see her eventually go to a other fancy-looking mansion that's also in the woods. Um, <laughs> does anything look weird about this mansion? Uh, no, you, you know enough about the city, even though you haven't really been here, probably, um... You know this is probably one of the other two Havenwood, like, big Havenwood houses. This is either the Crawford residence or the Ward residence. Alright, um, I guess I'll, like... Um, I guess I'll just kind of, like, watch from a distance, I guess, see what she does when she gets there. Uh, she begins to climb up a tree and then throw pebbles at a nearby window like balcony there's like a little balcony like window type thing okay i guess it's just a balcony and then it has like a door that leads out and she's she's the door has a window in it and she's throwing pebbles at the window and then eventually you see a here let me grab them uh 
You see another girl of about a similar age open up the door and then help her off the tree and then they go inside. Is it do I recognize her at all? Uh no. But it looks like that was her you could surmise that was probably her bedroom that she was that they were entering to. You know, two girl best friends hanging out in a bedroom yeah, together. Two, yeah, just just two two gal pals just hanging out, you know, just sneaking away from home to. Yep, best friends. All yep. right, well, <laughs> I've probably seen enough without like risking my position, so I'll like follow my path back. Okay, my marking uh, back. While Chase was was gone educating himself about lesbians, Eliza and Amir, were you waiting for him, or were you... No. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. No, Eliza's I like... Just think he's, I just think he's kind of acting weird for falling just some girl into the woods. Yeah, <laughs> like... Eliza thinks he's a creep for I that. noticed that she looked weird. It's suspicious. It's something like something fell off, so... You know, since there's this whole mystery going on, I figured may as well. So, inside the mansion... Not that weird. <laughs> you scraped the triangles girl through the trees. woods. It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Scraping triangles in the trees as you follow. <laughs> with teenager. a baseball bat with a nail through it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's okay. It's okay. Uh, just it's covering okay. all your bases in this pseudo murder investigation. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Covering all my bases in this murder investigation. See, I'm covering, by, see, I'm covering all the bases because I've, I'm, because I've got the baseball bat, you know, with the bases. <laughs> so, uh, inside, um, you do hear Valencia wheeling her way into the room. Uh, she suffered from a uh, horse incident when she was just young, like horseback riding. And she greets greets you, Eliza, and she goes, oh, I see you made a friend. And she says that, like, really surprised. Uh, let's not get too, uh, <laughs> too hasty here. He's more of a hostage. And I don't know where the... <laughs> where did Chad go? Uh, she says, genuinely believing Chase's name is Chad. Who's Chad? <laughs> Valencia asks. Uh, he's is, another hostage. I think he might be stalking your sister. Uh, wait, yeah, Amir, do you say anything before? <laughs> no, I just look away. Okay. Like mm. my my si Arya? Did you see her? Yeah, she was uh walking out, and I think maybe uh. Chad Jason, or whatever his name was, was following her. With, uh, he was definitely holding his baseball bats with its implements. That just uh, sounds so. even worse. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah, she goes to, like, over into the hallway, and then you hear her talking to, like, some servant people. Um, and then she... <laughs> Goes around and she goes, okay, yeah, I sent out people to uh, look into that. Um, who not a fan of that. Hey, um, what, uh, what are you here for? Uh, are you familiar with Grandma Agnes's book club? Oh, yeah, they're, um, they've been uh, doing business, which I'm sure you've heard about. Getting into all yeah, sorts I, of trouble. Yeah, I'm looking for uh, one of their members. Oh, hmm, I'm hmm. not to say that I've had any experience with them, but uh, what what would her name be? Uh, Liz Galloway. Uh, she was a former student at Silver Moon too. You may have seen her there. Uh, she has not had any experience with Liz, it seems. Yeah, just curious, did you mean to make that role public? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure you didn't mean to be private rolling that. Nope. I'm uh, right. doing these fortune rolls public, which basically are just whatever fortune has something to 
decide. Uh, but yeah, she does not appear to have made any um, contact with her either in either back in the in her school days or um, you know or um, back at um, through business <laughs> dealings of any kind. But she has clearly had run-ins with Grand Magnus's book club. It appears based off yeah. of how she was speaking. Yeah, is there anything you can tell us about that group? Um, well, I feel like they bite off a lot more than they can chew. It, um, I know that they don't always get along super great with some of the other, um, bigger underworld organizations, let's say. Uh, there's, be there's been a few nasty falling outs and all that, and I, uh, honestly feel, worry a little bit for their safety. It, um, it seems like there's some bad blood in between them and a few other groups. And, uh... Yeah, well, I think Liz may have murdered someone. Well, actually, I'm pretty confident she murdered someone. And Eliza will take out the, uh, spirit bottle. Not, like, releasing the spirit, but... Gesturing to it kind of indicating, like... Valencia. I literally have the ghost right here. Valencia kind of looks around and goes, hmm, just a little, be, a, be a little careful about where you show that. Um, Eliza seems genuinely surprised that people here aren't just, like, chill with that. <laughs> uh, Valencia and you have a feeling her family is. Servants, maybe not so much. Uh. Um, but, uh, she... Um, yeah, these people are definitely the type that, you know, the Wandersong family, they probably have spirits locked up in this house somewhere and do stuff with them. Um, some families also actually, and researchers, keep spirits around because they're just good sources of information, too. Um, that's just a thing that uh, people, people kind of do sometimes. Um, but she, <clears throat> she says, no, I mean, I can g kind of point the way to where the, the book club is, though I'm sure you already know where it is. Um, but yes, I mean, I guess if you want us to officially inquire to Grandma Agnes herself, we could, uh, maybe do that, but that would maybe take a week or two. No, I think we're gonna... They're meeting tonight, right? I believe tonight's the night, yep. Yeah, I think we'll just, uh... Do you think it would be a bad idea to stop on by and see if we can catch Liz there? Ah, uh, you can try. Okay. Nice. Thanks, Valencia. Yep. Nice talking to you, Eliza, and uh, nice meeting you. And then she she uh, wheels over uh -huh. to you and like raises her hand to sh shake your hand, Amir, and she seems to be asking for your name. Uh, Amir. Yeah, I shake. I shake. Nice <clears throat> meeting you, Amir. And then she she, she uh, goes back down the hallway as um. Cat didn't kill your sister. <laughs> yeah, she seems like she has other pressing matters to attend to. Um, cut to... Uh, Chase, are you making your way back to the Vatchet exterior? Uh, yeah, I guess. Am I back by the time they're done? So, as you... Um, y yeah, as you... Um, are coming back through from the woods, you see... Uh... A bunch of what appear to be strong guard-type men uh, kind of approaching your general direction uh, in a kind of alarmed jog. They don't seem to know that you're there, but they, they know the way you went, it looks like. Uh, I'll duck around a corner. and do. It. Can I tell what they're doing by, like, how they're running, or by where they're running, or what they're doing? Uh, they seem to want to be going in the woods, kind of the way you entered from. Alright, should, should I follow them now? Uh, I mean, they're coming towards you. Um, oh, uh, is there a good hiding spot nearby? Uh, yeah, I feel like this would be a roll. Um, Prowl would probably be another one. Um, even though we're kind of still in the free play phase type deal, uh, you could still, um, 
stress yourself if you want to just to be safe. No, uh, I'll just I'll just prowl. Okay. Go for it. Risky standard. Okay. All right, since it clearly doesn't work, what I'll do is I'll like kind of like trip and fall on the ground and pretend like I've like passed out and been here for like hours. <laughs> like like I've like like I like tripped and fell or like hit my head or something and I'm just lying on the ground. Okay, the the group the group of uh, guardsmen run over to you and they go, <laughs> okay. "Hey, hey!" And then like one of them kind of kicks you over. Uh, Who are you, boy? Uh, uh, what happened? Do you know where you are? Yeah, I think I was, I was, I was going for a walk, and then, I don't know, next thing I know, you're kicking me, you're kicking me. <laughs> I think, <laughs> let's see how good this performance of yours is. Um, I don't even know what to roll for this. Um... <laughs> Sway? Yeah, sway? Question mark. What's your your sway is at zero? <laughs> Damn. Um. But I feel like it'd possibly be a sway. <laughs> All right, I'll try it. <laughs> All right, that is gonna be two d six. Take the lowest. <laughs> All right, at two. What did you do with Arya? Arya? Who's Arya? You damn well know who Arya is. Start talking, boy. We're gonna drown you in this fountain. <laughs> uh... Is Arya that one girl? They, they seem to let up a little bit, but they go, yes. Oh, well, you know, I just saw her go into the woods, like... I tried to follow her, but then I tripped and fell. Hmm. They seem. This seems to be a common enough occurrence that they buy your story. Uh, three of them decide to go rush out, uh, while this one like, "All right, I've taken you into the mansion," and like, <laughs> as you're like being escorted, <laughs> um. Eliza and Amir <laughs> walk out, and they just see this. How, how like, because these are guards, right? Are like, how like decked out are they in like gear? Uh, they got like pretty, like they're in uniform more so. Um, so oh, not damn. necessarily in like, like, like bulky like protection type gear. Not, no, like... but I feel like they definitely have like leather armor of like or like tough leather of some type on them underneath the uniform. Um, and they're carrying, I, I think he's definitely carrying a gun on him. Oh, okay. Hey, Chad, what are you doing? Chad, it's, it's Chase. Yeah, yeah, Chunk Jackson. <laughs> Chunk Jackson, okay. I, I feel like the guards probably, Eliza, do you know this kid? Yeah. Is he is he good? <laughs> I guess. Am I good? The guard we'll seems see. very confused. Well, if you're with Eliza, I guess you're a friend of the family too. I'm gonna go talk to Valencia about this, and then he just kind of leaves all three of you and goes back inside. Eliza walks up to Chase and just like flicks his forehead. And it's like, why are you following teenage girls through the woods? I, it, I, I, it wasn't for any weird reason. I, I don't know. Something looked suspicious, and you know, with the missing people, you know, that we're looking for, I wasn't sure if you know maybe that might be related. But it seems, seems like it might be fine. You know, she made it through and went inside, went to another mansion. So it seems like it'll be all right. I would imagine Eliza knows the ramifications of that. Probably. Yeah. I, I feel like, Eliza, you probably... So, Eliza, you do know that the three Havenwood houses aren't necessarily supposed to have any sort of, like, romantic connections between the three of them in order to, like, keep a balance of power. 
uh, but it does seem like the daughter, uh, the youngest daughter of the Wandersongs and the youngest daughter of the wards uh, do seem to have a, uh, a very close connection that uh, some people have commented on in the past. Yeah, so Eliza, who did not have the social tact to realize what was going on for uh, before, uh, but now realizes what uh, she has done by mentioning this to Valencia, is experiencing regret for the first time in her life. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Eliza's just like, uh. yeah, that's not great. Let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, Amir is just pinching like the the middle of his eyes, like, oh jeez, <laughs> like this is a headache. Let's just get out of here. Yeah, let's just let's just go. So you have enough time to reconvene before we're gonna go over to Grandma Agnes's here. This is definitely gonna be where we have to decide all of our favorite parts of the score. Uh, which includes the uh, plan we want to use, and all that fun stuff. Yeah, where's if, my cards? If I can find the page for that. Let's see. Alright, so, like before, we uh, if you have the PDF open, it's on page 127. Uh, we need to decide which uh, which plan we're going to use here. Assault, deception, stealth, occult, social, or transport. Uh, I feel uh, like... Give me just a second. I didn't have it open. You said page 127? Yep. Yeah, I feel like... While you talk this, this over, is... actually, let me go grab another lemonade LaCroix. La <laughs> I'm very thirsty. I'll be right back. Sorry about this. LaCroix? I know. Hey, listen... Yeah. Not a big fan. Uh, I had to get off of soda somehow, and uh, it was doing the work. It, it's, I got it's I've got some part. Baja Blast I can drink. I got a couple cases the other day. Yeah, you got a lot of Baja Blast actually. I saw the photos. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna... uh, yeah, I didn't get all of that. It wasn't all mine, but it, do you drink I it got, to get got, into the character of Chase Johnson? It changes, does Baja Blast exist in Victorian England? It can. This or is Victorian a world of our. This is a world of our own creation. Anything's possible. Anyways, I'm gonna go. Yeah, but tables can't exist, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen. You know, elec electric fences, all that kind of stuff. But no, no tasers. Uh, taser is basically just an electric fence. Like, are you familiar with uh, the concept? Of Tasers weren't invented till 1993. <laughs> Tasers when are as old as I am. <laughs> when were electric fences invented? Uh, okay, it's making technology compact is hard. Though. Yeah. Uh, Have you seen a cell phone from the nineties? Uh, nineteen thirty-six, actually, for electric fence. Yeah, well, that's not eighteen hundreds Victorian London. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, you know, it's partially due to fantastical elements, but... Yeah, all listen. right, all right. Well, I can't have a fantastical element uh, uh, taser. Your fantastical element is that you're a football player who somehow fixed matches by himself. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that. I was like, do you know how football works? I don't know. <laughs> well, no, but wasn't but wasn't his thing that he played bad on purpose so that the other team would win? That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that's that's the thing. That makes okay, sense. Okay, but like a single person doesn't have that much control in a football game. Here, does anyone here know how to play football? <laughs> I, I I mean, mean I it could definitely I sway in the favor. Like if you yeah, have one person it'll, on it'll your help. team was just playing like dog shit on purpose, that's gonna matter on a competitive level. <laughs> Yeah. I'll just bench you. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. But I, I was like, I would like. Okay, so I, no, no, no. It is how it works because I'm, I'm like, the, I was like the star player, so they would never bench me. Yeah. If you were like tripping over your shoelaces, <laughs> they would. See, this no, is no, why he eventually. I mean, I this is why he eventually it. got caught. I wasn't obvious about it. Yeah, I, I could buy that. 
Yeah, like, like I like I was I Chase was the quarterback, you know, he's got a lot of control. Also, if you want to invent a compact taser using the, the Volt technology that exists in the setting, I feel like that would be a very funny long-term project after Microwave is yeah. made. Anyways, I need to go yeah. grab that fucking drink. T talk amongst yourself what plan you want okay. to use while, while I'm going to grab that. That was a very fun aside. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah, I feel so like I guess this I'm... is social. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Like, or we could assault. We could just go in and attack everyone. No, I I do not think we should attack anyone. Ooh, what about what about like deception? What if we just go in and like you know we walk in with a bunch of like um like a uniforms and we try to like sell them something or something like that? Uh, I feel like I feel like by virtue of Liz being a former student, Eliza kind of already has a good enough excuse. To get in there and also okay so like imagine you're at a book club and the jehovah's witness shows up at the door and interrupts <laughs> it and you're like Listen, that's not jehovah's witness that's what if my we go in freak as, professor what if we're going in as like new new members of the club actually no it's women only isn't it yeah only eliza can get in there oh, and again boy. why is my freak teacher trying to join a book club <laughs> oh yeah, I guess you're right, huh? Um, I am back. Yeah, I feel like the easiest way is to just catch her after and go with a social way of engaging her. Now, full disclosure, Eliza is 100% okay with letting uh, Cecilia possess her. <laughs> uh, Eliza is not a good person. <laughs> Alright, um... So we, we we should we should just have disguises, you know, go for a deception approach. Why? What do the disguises do? I don't know, cause she would recognize her teacher, which is you, and the rest of us are are are, are guys, so we can't be a part of the book club. So well, we, we need can to just find talk a way to her like, normally. I, I guess, but that's but that's not as exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the fun in that? I don't know. I have a ghost in a bottle that wants to possess her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess I guess we can do that. We could just kind of wait until the meeting's done. <laughs> just okay. Um. Yeah, it's Eliza doesn't want to trip on the toes of Grandma Agnes too much. Okay. Um, so also, just for context, these scribbles off to the edge are the edge of the forest. Like, th these are all heavily forested, uh, area. Okay. Is this book club, is it supposed to be, like, a secret thing, or is it very public knowledge that it's happening? Uh, no, it's, it's public. Is it public that it's a potion selling front? No. That's the that's the illegal hidden part of it. It's very heavily rumored. A lot of people know about it, um, but also denizens of Havenwood are used to having rumors about them in general, anyways, because the rest of the city kind of thinks that this part of the city is where all the freaks are um, that deal with ghost shit, and they're not wrong. Um, but there's all sorts of wild rumors out there about basically everyone who has any sort of business or is commonly in Havenwood. Yeah, if it wasn't for the long commute, Eliza would probably move here. Yeah, this is P this is very Eliza core part of part of Knoxbury. All right, so I think we'll go with the social plan. Um. Okay. Because I think, uh, I think like we can just idea. talk to her after and be like, hey, I can't help but notice you might have murdered someone. I don't know. I feel like that might not be the best idea because we don't know. We I feel like social would probably be a lot better if we like knew more. Because we don't know how she'd react to being confronted. So, because yeah. social is also negotiate, bargain, or persuade, which of those three would you be doing, if any? Like, what, what, what would your main goal be of talking with her? I don't know to figure out. Just accusing her of 
killing her friend or not out tell you if someone comes up to me and says hey did you kill this person and i did i'd be like i would basically lie my ass off so i think going in for like a deception approach now you do have the ghost as leverage yeah no that's my point it's we could use the ghost to bargain for information like hey i have the ghost of the woman you murdered (laughs) Yeah, I, I guess we can do that. Yeah. I guess you, you can kind of lead this, uh, this, um, this event, and we can, uh, Amir and, and Chase can kind of back you up. You know, the muscle and the hustle. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you- I'll so, be the muscle. So, it, by the time you get there, the book club would probably be operating. So, yeah, th- that's the one thing. Uh, we have, um... Okay, so yeah, the detail that we need to provide for the attack would be the social connection that we have, and I feel like the social connection would be Cecilia. <laughs> um, uh, and then item loadouts is the last thing we need. So I'm just going to go in order here from top to bottom of the Roll20 uh, journal that I can I can see all of the characters. Um, Amir, do you want to go light, medium, or heavy? Uh lights okay and also i just realized that the book says light normal or heavy and that really bothers me i feel like that should be medium um but it makes Mm -hmm. sense uh okay um chase do you want to go light normal or heavy um i go like normal like medium okay uh and then eliza I'll go normal. Uh, does my spirit bottle count just as one of my, uh... I, I feel like since we already determined you have them, yeah. we'll mark that off um, right away. Is it italicized? Because if it's italicized, it's not. it doesn't count for no, load. It's a, it's a thing you gotta bring. Oh, okay, okay. And you also have two of them. One of which is occupied, the other obviously is not. Um, yeah, we'll see, uh... We'll see how this goes. Yeah. Uh, and also, just, uh, I want to make sure people aren't, uh, let's see, I don't know if any of these would matter right now, but I just realized we haven't used any special abilities yet, uh, but I don't think any of them have applied yet, so, <laughs> actually, yeah, this is, oh wait, I just looked at that one, what's Chase's bodyguard, when you protect teammate, take one dice to your resistance roll, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, just re- remember that too. Uh, you can, if a teammate is suffering from a consequence, um, you can protect them and kind of like take mm-hmm. the consequence for them, and you get a, a bonus for that. Uh, Julia, I do know that. Chase. So yeah, it it just hasn't really come up yet. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we all were in the proper way with that. So, uh, Eliza, yeah, Eliza, are you just knocking on the door like when the meeting's about to happen? Or are you gonna? Uh, we're gonna wait. I think we're going to wait for it to be over and just kind of like. Are you waiting like obviously outside the shop, or are you like waiting in the bushes somewhere off to the east or west? The, I imagine we're like waiting in the bushes. Everyone cool with waiting in the bushes off to the side? Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can see. A little bit to the north from where the home is, there is a massive, like, bonfire pit. Uh, there seems to be a shed full of various supplies you can't really see because the door is closed right now. Uh, a big fenced-in garden. Um, and then also a pond that seems to have something glowing on its surface, but you can't quite make it out from here what that is. Uh, so that does raise a question about... Uh, one of my special abilities, or the special ability I do actually have. Yeah. Is it just flavor text when it says you're always aware of supernatural entities in your presence, or does that mean very literally I'm always aware of supernatural entities in my presence? Uh, I'm pretty sure that means you are always aware of supernatural entities in your presence. Uh, For context, uh, Forged in the Dark games are kind of just like that. Uh, Beam Saber had a special ability, which was you always know when someone is lying. So, <laughs> yeah, these special abilities can be powerful. Um, so, yeah, I, you always know when something's supernatural. Okay. 
Do I know if there's something supernatural in that pond? Um... Well, or if there's say a supernatural entities? entity in that pond? Yeah, I feel like you gotta get closer than that. But okay. you can kinda weasel your way around in the darkness if you want to. No, we're just gonna wait. <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah, you wait about two hours for the book club to be done, uh, and nobody exits, but what you do see is a witch exit out the back door of the building, go towards the shed, grab like a big barrel and just start to roll it into the building again. Barrel. A barrel. <clears throat> barrel. All right. And she's like visibly a witch. Yeah, they're they're all hooded up. They got a little face mask on. Maybe they're just being conscious about like this disease that's going around. Possibly. <laughs> 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 I call. Oh no! <laughs> Eliza steps away from a <laughs> me. Yeah. But yeah, you can see the, the light. Like, there's clearly candles and stuff. Like, people are clearly still inside the building, uh, doing stuff. But the scheduled book club time that you are aware of is very clearly over by what you can gather. Alright. Do, so. do we just wait? Or should we do something about this? So would I know if you can... Never mind. That's actually a very stupid plan. Oh, and also I think I told you earlier that this was a potion shop and... Um, home and, and book club. What I also meant to say is that the potion shop part of it is hidden, but there is a... The basement of Grandma Agnes's home is a bookshop, too, actually, too. I just realized I, I fucked up describing this house. Sorry about that. So people go here above the table to buy books as well as take part in the bookshop, uh, but the potion side of Grandma Agnes's operations is the criminal one that people mostly don't know about. So this is also just a bookstore as well. Why don't, what time is it right now? Uh, late. Like, probably like nine. Is this is the bookshop usually open at this time? You don't know. Uh, should we just go, like, knock on the door and ask if they're open? Uh... I feel like that might lean a little bit into deception, but... Uh, I mean... It's, it's a social call. Yeah, I mean, also, those you don't need to feel married to those plans. It's just to kind of get the initial position of it okay. uh, going, so... Well, it doesn't hurt to at least knock and ask if they're open, because what, what's the worst they could do? Say, no, we're closed. Who knocked yeah. uh, I'll, 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 you know, I'll go because it might not be a good idea for Eliza to go in case, you know, she's in case uh, Liz is in there, you know? Yeah. I'll go. So I'll walk up. And you didn't have any classes with her. I don't think we, we established that, right? Yeah. I mean, I pretended that I, like, I knew her and I feel like I probably would have known and that I knew of her and maybe had seen her, but I didn't really have a relationship with her in any way. Yeah. Alright, so I'll knock on the door. Knock, knock, knock. Uh, a... You don't know if it's the same which person or not answers the door. Can, can hey, I help you? Uh, hey, I know it's late, but is, uh, is the bookshop open? Uh, well... And then you, you hear her kind of yell back, and then you hear an old voice go, Let him in. And she goes, Yep. Uh, do you know what you're looking for? And then she kind of motions uh, for you to come on in. 
I'm, 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 I've kind of been interested in some like spiritual stuff lately, trying to see if there's anything about ghosts. Mm. Yes, come, come. And then she motions for you to go out in. And as I walk in, I'll kind of like give a glance back to the others. All right, you see Chase being escorted into the house. Chad's coming in. Does it seem like the door was locked behind him? Uh, I feel like that'd be a roll. <laughs> okay, well, the survey, I guess. Yeah, go for it. As I... <laughs> Too dark. It's pretty dark. Yeah. All right, yeah. Sorry, I just had to count something out. Um, but yeah, you you can't see. It's too far away and too dark by now. Even though they do have like a little lantern above the porch to kind of let you know. Um, why don't we cut to the interior if everyone's cool with that? Yeah. So yeah. inside, you see. I should probably hide these. <laughs> I just realized I would have done something kind of dumb. This is a two-story house, by the way. You do know. Is, th is there a basement? Oh, yeah, you said the shop's in the basement, right? So yep. Technically, it's like a three-story then. Well, I know well, two-story is just like ground and up. That's yeah. right. So, yeah. But it's three floors, right? Yes, three floors altogether if you include the basement. So, inside, uh, there's a very pleasant-looking lounge area with a spiral staircase leading upstairs. Um, you see a bunch of women all dressed similarly, uh, seeming to work on something or other. Uh, and actually, sorry, I should say, the spiral staircase spirals both uh, downward and, like, there's a little landing, but it goes both down and up. Uh, like... It, it uh, covers all three floors, it seems like. Uh, at the dining room, you see a very uh, pleasant-looking short grandma with a funny little sorceress hat on. She kind of waves at you as you come in. Welcome to Grandma Agnes's bookstore. Hi. Are you, are you, are you Grandma Agnes? Yes, I am, dearie. All right. I'm, I'm looking. I, I've never been here before. You know, what's, what's the story behind this place? Oh, you know, just, um... Back, back when I was a young girl, I loved nothing more than collecting books. It drove my parents nuts. I just kept collecting and collecting, and people kept giving me stuff and donating, and eventually I just became a well-known bookseller in the area. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I've had well, this place ever since I was I was young. I went from Agnes's bookshop, and I changed it to Grandma Agnes, because I thought it was cute. Yeah, I feel bad for stopping by so late, you know, it just it took me a while to get here. Oh, don't worry, we just got finished with our book club and now we're now we're uh doing some uh business stuff. Oh, book club, huh? Oh, what have you guys been reading? Oh, we can't really you have to be part of the club to know about that. Oh, secret. can I join? Ah, women only, I'm afraid, dearie. Dang. Try out, well, I, try out Bistonwell Library. I know they have a, a very, very popular book club there. Maybe you won't learn about the same types of supernatural phenomenon here, but uh, if, if you love literature, that's a good place to go. Anyway, um, that's good to know. But I, what, what I came here for is I'm looking for some books, you know, on ghosts. Uh, people becoming ghosts, especially, like, in the cases of, like... You, you mean you death? Know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um... Um, but like, but like the process in which like people become ghosts, especially when, you know, unnatural causes of death, you know, such as murder. Ah, uh, yes, I'm sure we can, uh, I'm sure there's, there's, um, we probably have a book or two on that downstairs. And then, uh, she 
motions over. There's, you notice this one woman seems to be standing in front of the staircase as if to maybe guard it. This one? Yes. Um, okay. And in fact, uh, ooh, I there's some cool custom markers that we can use for uh, this, but I, it's not obvious enough, so I'm just going to uh, here. Uh, she's gonna yell over Tabitha, take take our friend down and uh, help him find what he's looking for. She just kind of nods. Also, take an apple from the basket from the kitchen on your way down, sweetie. It's a new customer uh, bonus. I'll grab an apple and I'll stick it in my pocket. Okay. Do you follow Tabitha down? Yep, I do. Okay. Well, that's happening. Outside. Yeah, Chase, Chase made it in fine. <laughs> All right, so Eliza's probably really impatient. You start to hear triangles being scratched in the wood behind you. No, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Chase too. <laughs> A supernatural being imitating Chase. <laughs> the doppelganger. Yeah. yeah, that one is Chad. Also, uh, Julian, while editing the first uh, session of this, technically episode two, I just want to say that the first action your character got involved in was you being chased by a dog, and your name is Chase, and I think that's oh. beautiful. We didn't oh. plan for that. That was incredible. Um, yeah, I guess it, it was, huh? I mean, I, actually, the first action was just the fact that, like, Amir chased me. Yeah. And when you pull out your Johnson, mm. things are gonna get real now. <laughs> oh no! I mean, who, I mean, and anything could happen at this witch shop, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I imagine Eliza is like, he's dead. He's dead. They killed. Him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not upset by this, but I just kind of wish I was there to see it. I'm just smoking. <laughs> You're just gonna see how this goes. Yeah, I think yeah. Eliza's gonna enter the bookstore. Emir, will you follow? Uh, I, I guess. Like, I just snuff out my my cigarette or blood or whatever, and like go in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you start making your way over. Uh, we are going to cut down to the basement. Oh, hell yeah, you did this the smart way. What? It's a, you didn't make every single floor different. <laughs> no, I am wont to do that, but uh, this place was so small, there was no point. Oh, I just made really big maps. Yeah. Um, I Yeah, sometimes it gets too big and I do a, a different roll 20 slide for each one, but... Uh, yeah, you see a couple different se uh, sections, and as uh, you walk over to the occult section... Uh, Tabitha asks, so how long have you been in Knoxbury? Just as as long as I can remember. Hmm. My family uh, came here from uh, the Banagarian Kingdom uh, about ten years ago. I was just a girl. She seems a little bit younger than you, like maybe like 19 or so. Alright, um... Okay, um, <laughs> I don't even know how to reply to that. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, like, Knoxbury, you know, like, it's kind of hard to tell how good or bad living here is compared to other places across the world. You know, I've never, I've never once left, left the borders. Yeah, well, if you're... I think most people are like that, too. Yeah, kind of hard when the gloom exists, but from my experience, my family's moved around a little bit. The Empire's the Empire, if you stay within the Imperial Kingdoms. Same old vault fences, same old ravens. A lot of the same. And then she, she pulls out three books and she goes, I think these would be a good place to get started. And they're like three different, like, Ghost 101 type books that are, like, pretty thick for what they are each. But they seem like good basic primers for someone who wants to first start learning about spiritology. I carry all three of them easily in one hand. She seems slightly impressed. 
Uh, anyway, w anyway, what's up with this whole book club thing? You know, that sounds really interesting. What, what have you guys been reading? What, it, what, what, have, what, it, how, how has it been? Oh, it's, it's been good. We, we, uh, learn, we, I probably should say too much about it. Grandma wouldn't like that, but. No, it's okay. I won't tell anyone. I'm good at keeping secrets. Yeah, uh, we, we learn a lot about spell casting and, uh. Blessings and enchantments and things that make our lives a little bit easier day to day. But things... is that stuff that you use regularly, or is it just just to know about them? Uh, a little bit of both. It'll, different, different for each person, I'd say. But uh, they come in handy. She kind of winks. Um, Chase, I wink back. <laughs> um, Chase, you do know that. Um, the imperial, like with how life kind of is just in the empire in general um it can it can kind of skew pretty patriarchal um and a lot of a lot of like magical and occult studies tend to be a little bit more popular with women because in many ways it is a it is a way up the ladder for them in ways that typical work usually isn't uh and can provide a lot more opportunities um, for, I, I guess, not even just women, but people in general who the, the traditional, like, labor system kind of doesn't really support. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a... That makes sense. It, like, it's a good way to have an alternate job and lifestyle without resorting to criminal underworld type stuff, too. So it's like this world's, you know, becoming, like, like, like becoming, making money off of, like, gaming or something, you know? Sure. Like the equivalent. It, yeah, I see a parallel there. Um, like, more, like... Like the more type of like, yeah, like, like it's an alternate path, definitely, in in a way like that. So, it's meant kind of like that comparison as like a joke, but you know, <laughs> if it yeah. works, it works. I guess if you I mean, say I it works, it's 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 like becoming it's it's, a, it's like becoming it's like this world's version of becoming a Twitch streamer. <laughs> I guess let's go with that. You don't work in an office, basically. You don't gotta worry about that bullshit. Or or working to death in a factory. Um, anyway, um, I'm gonna, like... Because, like, this is the basement, right? There should be, um, like, from at least my character's knowledge, there should be, like, a secret potion shop down here, right? Um, you don't technically know if it's in the basement. Okay, well, uh, I'll kind of, like, just glancing around, I probably don't see much, so I'll, so I'll be like... No, you do oh. notice that the uh, the lighting in this room is kind of like a unique blue, because uh, instead of being lantern uh, lit, it is actually lit by these kind of, like, crystals that seem to have a magical essence in them that kind of light up the place. Seems to be a good way to avoid uh, a fire making a bunch of books go up in flames. Okay, um... So, uh, just not really seeing too much down here, I'll say something like, um... So, you, you know, I also saw the steps kind of going upstairs, you know, what's up there? Uh, oh, Is that's... it more books? No, no, those are our offices. No, you're not allowed up there. Oh, why not? Uh, th that's where we keep all of our business documents and, and stuff. How many business documents do you need for a bookstore? A lot. We, we, we sell books far and wide throughout the city to a lot of important people. Huh. Well. <laughs> I just love, I'm imagining this conversation while also imagining your character is standing like, at, at, like right beside this character and literally giving you the glare that he has in, in his icon. <laughs> Like that little suspicious, like, side glance. Oh, no. <laughs> like, hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, I guess my, I guess Chase doesn't really know where to go from here. I guess, um, I guess you'll find a, um, if there's any, like, chairs or a table nearby, you just kind of, like, sit there and start reading unless, you know, um, just Chase is the kid who gets the manga out of the Barnes and Noble aisle and then sits the fuck down and starts reading it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> there, there does appear to be a little bench, uh, kind of to the south. Like, all right, well, I'll sit there and unless uh, Tabitha says, you know, kind of tries to kick me out, then I'll just 
stay there at least until she she might kind of leave so I can maybe like investigate a little bit more. Uh, yeah, if, if you want to check it out and see if it's worth the money, just uh, be be back up and don't don't stay too long. Don't read too much of it without pain. Uh, I'll right, be upstairs we'll if you need anything. And then she walks upstairs. Um, All right. We will cut back to you in a bit, but I want to kind of cut to... Oh, no! no. Um, you have been... Chase, too. No. Chad. Chad. Chad Jackson. Uh, Eliza, you're at the front porch. Yeah. You see you see a couple moths uh, kind of hovering about the lantern light above the doorway. Eliza feels welcomed. <laughs> uh, Eliza's just gonna walk in. <laughs> uh, h hello? You see one of these, uh, one, one of the, uh, workers seems to be startled as a, um, as, uh, another one comes up the staircase and continues to stand watch. Hi, uh, I'm looking for a member of your book club. Yes. Uh, her, her name is Liz. Liz. I think she might be doing paperwork. And then, uh, she goes over to talk to Grandma Agnes. And then, uh, they whisper some stuff. Um, and then you... Also, I would just want to say to the east, you hear the suspicious noise, not suspicious, but the noise of a lot of, like, cargo boxes being unpacked over in what appears to be a study from what you can glance at. Um, but anyways, uh, this woman comes back down, and, uh, she says, what, what are you looking for, uh, what, what are you, uh, what are you looking for Liz for? Uh, is she, is she, is she's a former student? of mine and um i was trying to track her down but the only lead i really got was to this book club so i kind of had to wait until you were holding your book club to do that i see what what do you want to speak with liz about oh he, you know just like catch up see if she got a job see if she wants to like come back as an adjunct. Oh, I see. Well, she does happily work here at Grandma Agnes's bookstore, but let's, uh, let's go get Liz for you. And then she goes upstairs. Well, she says, like, stay here, stay here. And then she goes up. Amir, are you just standing outside? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, uh, uh, I assume we got this handled. A little bit later, uh, you don't see her come back down, but instead you do see Liz come back down somewhat confused looking uh hello Miss Battle hi uh you want to step outside for a second uh sure uh I'll, I'll be right back grandma she says and that it seems like all the all the girls here just call Grandma Agnes Grandma, which is kind of endearing. It's, I think Chase probably figured this would be a lot more dangerous, which is why he was playing it so safe and didn't even bring up, you know, Liz or anything. Just... Eliza is just a very tactless person. Yeah, as, I think. Uh, as as uh, they walk out, uh, Chase, you, you kind of hear the sound of Eliza's voice upstairs as you sit on the bench. Okay, well, um, I'll go... Can, is it possible? Is it at all possible for me to just s sneak up, not only upstairs, but, like, the landing above that as well? Like, to the, the top floor? Is that um, possible for me to sneak up there? I just realized we forgot to roll the engagement roll. <laughs> um, oh. But also, I guess we haven't done anything super dangerous. What was that sway roll for, by the way, for Chase's thing? Um... Uh, um, that was at the mansion. That was for the guards. Oh yeah, the survey. Like, the survey was technically the first roll of the mission, but like I don't know if that counts enough. So this would probably be the the engagement roll actually. So you want to try sneaking upstairs, right? 
Yeah. Um. So, time to go through the major advantages and disadvantages situation. Is the operation we are currently on particularly bold or daring? I don't. Not really. Think so. Is it overly Throwing? complex? No. Not really. Um. Does our detail expose the vulnerability of the target? We have the ghost of someone who the target murdered. I feel like that's a yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's two dice. Is the target strongest against this approach, or do they have particular defenses or special preparations? I don't think so. I don't think they'd be prepared for... Or most like, people ghost. aren't prepared to see the ghost of someone they killed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, can any of your friends or contacts provide aid or insight for this operation? I feel like technically we kind of got that with Valencia, right? Yeah. So that'd be 3d6. Uh, are there any enemies or rivals interfering with the operation? Nope, because we don't have any enemies or rivals just yet. Is the rival system work like it did when we did Beam Saber? We, we can no, there, declare someone. there's no rival outside of the character who you established does not like you on character creation, and they oh, don't okay, have okay. any special mechanics. So, um, are there any other elements that uh, we want to consider? I don't think so. Um... Though, actually, one of the elements to consider is if the target is a higher tier, and we are technically tier zero, and let me look at what the book club is. Um, oh, whoops, that's the default. Uh, the book club is... Uh, oh, that's, the, that's under the underworld. That's tier two. So there are two tiers higher. I feel like that's probably a minus one. But that's still two dice, which is pretty good, all things considered. Um, I lost my place. There we go. So, I'm going to roll a 2d6 to establish what position we're starting out in here. Six. Uh, so, that is going to be controlled. Um, so, I'm going to say uh, you hear the sound of, like, uh, as, as you're walking out, uh, Eliza and Liz, um, the Liz as the Liz as the Liz's walk out. Um, if only Lizard was here. Yes, honestly, uh, you hear the sound of like a, a falling box and like a bunch of stuff spilling out in the study. Um, they sound it sounds like glass bottles. Not nothing. You don't hear any breaking, but a lot of like shuffling glass. Uh, and then you you hear Grandma Agnes go, oh dear, and then kind of run on over, and uh, Liz is like, oh, let me get, and then Grandma's like, no, no, you, you don't have to worry, Liz, go talk to your professor, and then they all go to help. Uh, it seems like they've been momentarily distracted by a thud, which also chase you here as you kind of go up the staircase. It seems like if you wanted to sneak upstairs... Now would I'll be go upstairs. an opportune time. Okay. Uh, you're going to need to roll a... I'd say that'd probably be a prowl again. Um, and then let me just... Hold on. I just need to count out how many... One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Prowl. Um, our position you said was controlled, right? Yep, it is going to be controlled position and standard and standard effect. effect. Okay. Uh, do you want to stress yourself for this roll or any of the sort? Nah, I think I'll be good. Hopefully. Yeah. Typically, when you fail a controlled action, uh, you get a second shot. And hey, we don't even need to worry about that. Uh, you just sneak sneak the fuck upstairs. All right, I go upstairs. Okay. Uh, let me reveal this so uh these are windows by the way if you're wondering what the this was i feel like it's kind of okay. obvious i mean that makes sense yeah um so you are in a hallway in the upper part of the building to your south is a closed door and you hear the sound of a lot of work going on and there is another uh it, it seems like this this just opens up into a larger room of some type to the north here um, so is this a wall right here? Yes. 
And is there, is there a passage right this way, or is this also a wall? That is a door that leads into another room, which through it you can hear the sound of... So I can go here or here, basically? Yes, but it, you can definitely tell there are a lot of people on the other side of the door to the south. Okay, I'll go up here first, kind of peek around the corner. Okay. You find yourself looking at... It appears to be a pantry full of many different ingredients and all sorts of weird plants and meats and things in jars that you can't even begin to really describe what they are. Um, and there appears if he to paid attention in my class. He could have <laughs> uh, probably. <laughs> and you see, I mean, I passed. I passed. I didn't get the best grade, but I passed. Um, and you see, yeah, there's just like pickled geckos in jars and shit. Um, mason jars all over the place. Uh, you see two women who seem to be organizing shelves at the very southern end of the room. Um, alright, well, I'll kind of ignore that for now because it doesn't seem like there's anything that relevant there. Um, as far as, I I'll kind of go back over here to the door. Is there, is there like, is there anything, is there like anything, is there, um, like a crack Maybe or like a, a keyhole? keyhole yeah. Like a crack or a keyhole I can look through. Just let's, this. let's give him the old classic keyhole look, look, look sees. The big Tom and Jerry ass keyhole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chase's <laughs> eyeball just pokes out the other end. <laughs> yep. Um, that would probably be a survey, I think. Survey. Okay. Still controlled also. Survey, controlled, no standard, bo no bonus dice. It's right, a, a three. It's a little hard to see out of this keyhole. It's it's kind of smaller than you thought. Um, and you said it sounded like there were a lot of people there? Yeah, it, it sounds like you hear the, a lot of shuffling, talking, a, a lot of different voices. Um, there's definitely more than three people in here. Um... And it, it, you, you hear the sounds of, like, things being moved. Or Honestly, it kind of reminds you of your chemistry class that you took. Um, from what I know, if I were to, like, walk in there, how, from what I know about the organization, how hostile are they likely to be? Uh, they'd probably be upset. You don't know how hostile they would be in terms of doing things to you. So, knowing, th because I know that it is, like, a potion... Like a potion thing. Like an illegal potion thing, yeah. If I were to walk in there and start talking about, like, stop talking about it like I was a businessman, you know, like going for, like, that social aspect, would would they, would that, that, that would probably be fine, right? It, you have the feeling they really, Tabitha was out here guarding, the, they really don't seem to want anyone up here that isn't okay. one of them. Uh, I'm not sure what I can do then. Is there anything I can do? Uh, I feel like you kind of got all the info, at least of the upper floor, that you could without yeah. revealing your position or possibly. Actually, what I'll do is, pickle. how does the door open? Um, does it like does it open toward me or does it open like to to the inside of the room? Uh, which one would you prefer? I can roll a fortune. Uh, whichever roll one I could easily block, so if in case shit shit happens, they can't leave the room. Um. Oh, you like locking it? Not locking, but like if I were to like put something in the way of the door, it wouldn't open correctly without like oh, them having to I put see. in a, like a lot of force. You Let's know? do a fortune roll on a one through three. It opens towards them, and a four through six, it opens towards you. All right, it opens towards them. <laughs> so if it opens towards them, it'd be hard to block from your spot. Um, is there anything like on the wall nearby, or like maybe some kind of like fence post? Uh, like, like is there like not a fence post, but is there like because the steps are right there? Is there like maybe like a post that I could like tie something to to prevent the door from being pulled towards them? Um. I definitely think there's pro I mean, yeah, it's like a spiral staircase. You could probably tie something to 
And I imagine kind of there's probably like a little bit of a guardrail from like where you're standing. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, is there anything? Um, you want to declare an item? It sounds like. Yeah, I'm trying to look at what I could do. I like, feel like some rope kind of could, rope. Rope could be considered a tinkering tool, maybe. Oh, maybe not from what this is. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Well, um, I don't know. Apply your screwdriver, rope. I feel like kind of maybe. Oh, well, well, climbing gear would be a rope. Uh, or burly. I think burly gear even you could get away with. Um, a coil of wire. Yeah, yeah. Let's say let's say that I have like a co coil of wire. Yeah, um, okay. Then we'll declare and, your burglary gear. Yeah, yeah. I'll declare that burglary gear. Um, let's do like a wire coil that I'll tie to the doorknob to the, um, to like the post of... Like, like whatever, like, um, railing there is for the, um, spiral stairs. Okay. And I'll, like, just try to make it look not very obvious. And if there is a panic, you know, the people coming from, like, the pantry probably may not notice it. Um, I mean, it is a wire. It's not, it, it won't be, like, very, like, super visible, I guess. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, so I, I guess and with, with this, I'll kind of like sneak back down, you know, kind of make it look like I'm c coming up from down from the basement, basically. Yeah, and I don't think you need to roll again for that. I think they're still distracted. Um, okay. So yeah, uh, so I guess what happened in the meantime for that? Yeah, parallel to this happening, uh, Eliza and Amir and Liz are all standing out on the front porch, and the door. I'm assuming Liz closes the door behind her. Won't stop her from doing that. Yeah. Uh, Eliza's like, "Hey, Liz, would you consider coming back to as an adjunct?" Oh, um, yeah. I had a real hard time uh, finding He's, work. I'm bad at small talk. Why did you kill Cecilia? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> her 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 face goes pale. I I I did I didn't. That no. Eliza takes out the. Uh, the spirit bottle is like, what do you think is in here? Oh my god. <laughs> or sorry, oh my Gwen is what they say in this world I established. Um, oh my Arceus. <laughs> I, fucking, <laughs> I fucking hate that with a passion. But <laughs> What is in the Oh my YHVH. <laughs> um, no, but uh, she... She 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 goes oh Saint Gwen and kind of like covers her mouth. She looks very horrified that you have uh, the spirit of a former friend of hers in a bottle that she also seems to have a role in the death of. Yeah, so uh, I'd like some information out of you. I did mean I I don't. What did she tell you? Uh. <laughs> She didn't say much about what happened, but I'll tell you right now, she's not happy. I I panicked. I didn't know what to do. You have to believe me. Alright. What did you do? Listen, Cecilia graduated and she couldn't find a job just like I couldn't. So I told her to do the same thing I did and join Grandma Agnes's book club. And, well, Eliza, you definitely know what we do here. Yeah. So, I was her mentor. We started doing operations together. She had a you, she didn't do well in spiritology. She went to school for business. She kind of hated doing the spiritual stuff. I'm sure if you had her, you would know she didn't do yes. very well. That's why she was on the wall. The what? Don't worry about it. Uh, okay. So. Well, she was on the wall for not being able to find a job, I'll tell you that, and I told her that even though she didn't know a lot about potions and magic and the occult, I could teach her as her friend, and I started to teach her the basics, I convinced Grandma Agnes that she was a hard worker and it'd be nice to have someone with a little more marketing-minded on the team, and I, I taught her the ropes, things were going great until... And then she like she like looks off into the woods and like you can tell she's not she doesn't want to talk about what she's about to tell you. 
And she kind Eliza of... puts her hand on, like, the cork of the capsule. No, 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 no. Listen, so... My boyfriend set us up with the deal to talk to a gang he was involved with called the Gold Gloves, and I, I didn't feel good about it. He went missing a little bit before this, but the deal went south. They wanted way, they wanted to pay way less for the potions than what we could offer, and I I took a stand and I said no, and I, I got a little... I stood my ground, I got a little heated, and they... They started getting violent, so I ran, and I, I didn't think to grab Cecilia with me, and she was still there, and, and she starts to cry. <laughs> hmm. It checks out to me. You never, never cross the gloves. Hmm. Well, yeah. that's... To be fair, it doesn't sound so much as they cross the gloves as... They showed up for the business deal, they're like, okay, we want to pay way less, and then when they're like, fuck that, you agreed to this price, <laughs> they lashed out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, Liza's just kind Ooh. of twirling the bottle in the air, kind of swishing around the spirit in it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> hmm. So you left her behind, huh? I didn't... This is the first time I had a deal go bad, okay? We all make mistakes. You feel like this is something that many other people have told her in the months since Cecilia died. This is like... Huh. Well... I... Suppose we could try to work something out with your organization. Ah, fuck. What did happen with your boyfriend? I don't... Yeah, that... That's a good question. Hi, this guy has some connection to those guys, I guess. I'm not really sure about it. He... He went missing. I asked the gang about it. They said that he went on a secret mission that they... He and his friend Jack went on some mission, mm -hmm. and they didn't tell anyone. Uh -huh. they, they couldn't tell anyone else what the details were, but they said it would be a big job, and if and if it went well, they the gloves would have a lot of money to work with. And Elwood never came back home, and apparently his friend died, and someone paid the family a lot of money claiming to be the government, at the very least, uh, saying that an accident had occurred. Right. Right. That checks out. That checks out. Yeah, this basically is verbatim what, uh, what, uh, your buddy Ed Prophet told you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So. Okay. Huh. Well, thank you for that information. That's very helpful. Um, yeah, Eliza, you can do your ghost thing or whatever. I'm gonna think over this, and then I just go, like, <laughs> out into the dark a little bit. And just, Liz like, looks at you once again and says, ghost thing. Oh, it's so... Uh, a funny thing. Uh, so, like... When we last talked to, uh, Cecilia, she, you know, wasn't happy. And she was pretty keen on possessing you. Uh, she starts to shake. Um, while this conversation is going on, like, as I'm, like, feigning coming back up from the basement, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like, come up and I guess I'll kind of see that they're outside, out, out the front doing this. And I'm just going to go behind him and, like, slowly kind of, like, shut the door and kind of, like, stay in front of the door oh, the right door, here. the door's been shut. Oh, it has been shut? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm just going to... Oh, so I don't know that they're outside? 
Uh, you can probably hear talking, but there's also a commotion going on, with, with, and you have like a stack of books in your head. Uh, in the study. All right, so if I hear that, I'm just gonna like hang out by the door, I guess, to prevent like pr to prevent since I know I kind of have an idea that they're outside. Yeah. To, to just kind of prevent her from running in if if she wanted to, you know. Yeah. So Eliza, <laughs> I was like. So, uh... I'm not really keen on killing people. Um... Well, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not keen on being there when they die. Um... Neither was Liz, to be fair. <laughs> uh. Well, I was like, uh. Think you could talk things out with Cecilia? You and I both know that an angry spirit is hard to talk down. I. That thing wants to kill me. Well, she doesn't necessarily want you dead. She does want your body. Yeah. She wants your body to be alive and in good shape. Yeah, that'll last, what, three, four months? And I'll wither away. I think we could maybe work out a deal with <clears throat> Grandma Agnes's book club. Let's go inside. I'm kind of wondering, like, if, um, how, um, the, the ghost will react to some kind of deal being cut if the ghost will be angry. If we're not going, if we're not going for the retribution route. It's, don't you worry your little head about this. That wasn't saying in, as a character. But, yeah, I know. <laughs> but... That's something I'm curious about. Amir. <laughs> Cut to Amir. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> Amir, you are now a ways back on the path. You are alone. Uh, yeah. Just wanted uh -huh. to do a vibe check on Amir and see how you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Like, so... <laughs> I mean, there's the stuff with the gloves, I'm like, okay, like, that's something I gotta check out at some point later down the line. Um, yeah, like, do I, do I know they're going back inside? Because if so, yeah, like, you, I you, you can definitely, uh, see that happening. Yeah, alright, so... <clears throat> I I make a I make a mental note to uh, dig up some more connections at a later point in time, and then I go back inside um, and see what's going on. Because clearly, if the ghost thing was happening, I would hear some screaming, which hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Uh. Chase, you see uh. Liz walking back in with the other Liz behind, and Amir off in the distance, kind of scooting over, <laughs> probably coughing with every little. Dog. Has anything has anything over here like gotten resolved at all? Or there's something? there's a lot of potions that seem to be scrambled on the floor, and they seem to be trying to also block your sight so they don't so that you don't see what they're trying to put back here. into the bags. How about how about let me just kind of just be like. Oh, something wrong. Let me help. Let me help. And I'll no, push no, no. Past them. no, 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 <laughs> no. I'll push past them and help. These are this is sensitive material, sensitive material. And then all three of them start to like grab you. <laughs> I, I push, I, me with my like, I guess, strong body, you know, I'll just kind of like, <laughs> kind of like wade through them. Could have been a linebacker. Yeah, there, yeah. There's a bunch of potions just strewn about on the floor. And, I'll, and I'll, even though they're like cl clinging onto me, I like start picking them up. 
let him help, I guess. Says Grandma Agnes kind of reluctantly. <laughs> <laughs> She's hoping you're dumb enough to not know what any of these are. <laughs> As I'm picking them up, I'm like, so what are these things? Look, They're looking like potions. Uh, don't... We can't talk about it. And It's Baja Blast. Non-disclosure. Baja Blast. Non-disclosure agreements. <laughs> Does Baja Blast exist in this universe? Absolutely. Oh, hell yeah. That's the Victorian period. Yep. I will also, I wanted to say, I forgot about this when I was getting my LaCroix. If anyone at home is wondering what the vault fences look like, uh, they're actually something that were originally in the setting, uh, and they're based off of something from Dishonored called the um, uh, Walls of Light, which were basically like an another, another electrical fence type thing, which when I first learned about Blades in the Dark, I was like, damn, I want to... I want to play that and add those cool electricity fences from Dishonored. And then I read the book and I was like, the person who wrote this book also really likes the electricity walls from Dishonored because they're just in the book. So, shoutouts to John Harper for making a very good game. <laughs> and also apparently liking the same things from Dishonored that I do. Um, but yeah, uh, Liz goes back in, along with Eliza and Amir, and uh, Chase is helping clean up some potions, apparently. Grandma, you hear Liz call. And Grandma goes, yes, what is it, Liz? Well, um, I think I'll just let Miss Battle tell you what's happening. Hi, um, Eliza, realizing she's put herself in, like, some type of mob boss negotiator position, realizes what she's doing and is like, oh god, I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> uh, I was like, so, um, did you know you're very bad at crime? What, what do you mean? I mean, like... You illegally sell potions, and also dealt with the most well-known terrorists in the Empire? She seems a little upset, and she goes, "What? what's your angle here? Oh, I don't... Uh, it probably sounds like I'm trying to blackmail you. That's, that's not really what I want to do, it's... So here's the thing. A bunch of criminals are running out my property, and now I really need to make sure they don't get caught. <laughs> and I just think there could be a mutually beneficial agreement. Uh. Does like blackmail? <laughs> <laughs> that seems like blackmail, uh, but I also. My back. Scratch my back and I won't reveal you to the authorities. Well, I love that, but also I love the idea of blackmailing someone and then also giving them blackmail on you by revealing that you're part of a criminal organization. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's called a mutually beneficial arrangement. But you're like forcing them into it, which is blackmail. So I just think that maybe... Uh... We could help you out with that kind of thing. And maybe uh you could give us like good deals on potions and maybe we could borrow your bookkeeper here. You're not still on bad terms with the gloves, are you? Oh, we absolutely are. We haven't ever since that deal went bad. We've been avoiding them like the plague. We're not much fighters, actually. We could honestly use some protection. Of course, of course. Well, uh, as it so happens to be, I have some connections with them. I can pull. A couple of strings to maybe at least ease up the tensions on that end, if that makes sense. That would be good, that would be good. Now what do you want Liz for? Uh, so here's the thing, if we were to try to do some like 
money laundering stuff or anything that needs money. It's listen, I'm a spiritologist. I don't know anything about money. Uh she seems like she's good with that though. Yes. Yes she is. As long as you promise no harm comes to her. She's already been through quite a lot. I'm sure you know about her friend. Yeah, you could say that. Uh, Chase, you have finished <laughs> putting all the potions back, and all three of the women try to, like, shove you towards Gravit Agnes. I, I sneak one into my pocket. Ooh, that would be a roll, for sure. Alright. That, that would be finesse, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's like a sleight of hand. You're still in controlled position, by the way. <laughs> so what? Ha so that means if I get a banned roll, you said I can roll again? So what typically happens with a controlled position and you get a failure, let me just double check with the book real quick. But typically, it's not necessarily so much so that you... Um you don't necessarily receive the consequences of a failure, but you kind of get a slap on the wrist. Um, and then uh, you can either... Yeah, okay, so uh, let's see. You falter. So you can either press on and try to do the same thing you just did by moving from controlled to risky, or you can just give up and kind of call it a mulligan. So like, well, you, you either get a free failure or you get two tries at does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it so controlled and standard. Yeah, no stress. No stress. Um Alright. I'll try it again. Okay, yeah. Let's just say that was a you you had a, a first opportunity to slip one in, but then you just noticed someone turn around and look at you to say something as you were about to pocket it. So you, you stopped before it was even obvious what you were doing, but you do have a second opportunity now. This will be risky and a, a standard effect. Alright, and this time I'll stress myself out, so let me add the stress. So then, do you want to do, uh, so you're pushing yourself, do you want to add a... Yeah, pushing myself. Yep, so then, do you want to do that to add one dice to your roll, add one more to your effect, which I, in this case I don't really think effect matters, um, or, uh, yeah, I, I guess it would just be one dice in this situation, nothing else makes sense, really, so... Yeah. Yeah, so add, add a dice, so I'll do that as a bonus dice. Alright, so that's a five. Uh, I'll say the consequence for that will be... Oh, that should have been risky, by the way, but it's fine, it doesn't matter. Um, oh, sorry. It's fine, it doesn't matter at all, since, I mean, I'm keeping track anyways. Um... So I'll say that the consequence for that is that you succeed right now, but later in the night when they're doing inventory, they definitely notice that a more expensive potion that they had paid for is not there, and you were the only person who could have possibly taken it. Um, they don't necessarily so know for they... sure that you took it. It could have just not been part of the delivery, but they have a pretty good idea that you maybe took it. <laughs> so... <laughs> You can always pass it up of, oh, uh, I'm a big dumb jock guy. It, like, fell into my pocket while I was picking them up. <laughs> and then I didn't realize it until later. Uh, peak Jace Chop. Oops. Oopsie whoopsie. Peak Chase, peak Chase Johnson shoplifting adventures. Accidental shoplift, yeah. All right, do, do I have any idea what kind of potion it is, or is that just something I have to figure You'll out You'll have later? to figure that out later. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, it appears that Grandma Ignis and Liz seem fine with your terms, though Eliza, Liz still seems very nervous around you. No, that's All fair. Right, Most so people with... are. So, with those terms in place, I take out my hand for a handshake to activate my I thought you were about to say... I thought yeah! you were about to say I take out my handgun and I was about to be like, what was this for then? <laughs> <laughs> what do you take me for, a monster? All right. Like werewolf? So, maybe? ghost contract. When you shake on a deal, you and your partner, human or otherwise, both bear a mark of your oath. It either breaks the contract or you take level three harm cursed. Um, 
So, is your contract going to be that you're going to get the gold gloves off their back, for sure? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and theirs <clears throat> is going to be that uh, you'll be business partners from now on, and Liz will be... I think this is going to technically make Liz your first cohort, actually. Um... Which, uh, technically is something we usually gain by getting a... By using tier... Like, um, by using upgrades. Uh, but I feel like within the fiction this makes sense. That, uh -huh. um... Yeah. That this would be how this works. Um... I'll have to figure out the mechanics of how... Of which, um... Of how this works here. But, um, yeah. I will say <clears throat> that, uh, yeah, you, you shake on the deal then. Mm hmm. Yep, as I shake, my ghost powers <laughs> briefly take over me and, like, <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, we now bear the Marth. The mark of the that Marth. <laughs> the you Marth. bear the Marth. The Marth. What yeah. happens if I type the Marth fire into Roll20? What you happens have the if fire I emblem symbol on you? Yeah. What happens if yeah. I type Marth into Roll20? Uh, <laughs> nothing turns out. Um, but yeah, Damn. I, I will say, um, <laughs> um, I, I just, I typed in ghost into roll 20 and I forgot I had the Gerber baby as a ghost baby from a previous campaign in here. Uh, <laughs> I, need to, I need to find a way to use that in this campaign. But I will say, uh, Eliza, your ghost mind ability pick, uh, kicks in as you see the faint flash of a ghost uh, kind of giving Amir a piggyback ride as he shakes uh, the hand Eliza's of Grandma like, Agnes. Okay, Eliza's like, okay. Okay. Well, you best you best keep your end of the deal, Grandma. Otherwise, uh, something unfavorable will happen. And don't you worry, because I also need to hold up my end. <laughs> so you too, strange hat man uh, who's friends with terrorists for some reason. <laughs> okay, old woman who was selling potions to terrorists for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she's in a position to be judging people for dealing with Listen, terrorists. Listen, there's a fine line between doing business with the terrorists and being friends with them. <laughs> Listen, I just know a guy who knows a guy who's probably related to a guy. I'm just saying. Alright, uh, well, uh, I think that wraps up this. Yeah. Uh, do you want to inform Liz that you broke into her apartment and broke down her door, by the way? No. No, <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, you still have one of the doors wired upstairs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. They can deal with that. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry about it. It was all Scooter's fault. Or, yeah, Scooter. That's his name. Shooter, yeah. yeah. Gutter. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Let's see. Gunner, shooter, I mean, that's the same thing. Yeah. So. Um. Let me take a look really fast at something. Because I'm curious. We are uh, definitely doing something fun and strange. Um. I think that our factional relationship, because it's still a little tense with Grandma Agnes's book club is going to remain at neutral. Um, That's fair. This is a, a very fine line between making a very close ally or a uh, strong rival, let's say. <laughs> Depending on how this partnership goes. Mm. Um, but yeah, are you, are you heading out then? Uh, yep. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yep. Uh, done my business. 
Are you going back to your boat and just heading back for the night? Well, I guess you can all just technically walk back home, because Amir and Chase, you're pretty close. Eliza can boat back. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do that. You take the boat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God it has a motor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. All right, well. Yeah, you uh, well, make your... Actually, before she goes into uh, the boat, Eliza is going to go out into the middle of the woods between the Wandersong estate and whatever one is between them. Yeah. And she's going to put on her fine spirit mask. Um, okay. Which, do you know how those work? No. <laughs> okay, fine spirit mask. But I imagine and it looks like eye. this, which is what happens when I type mask into Roll20. Oh no. Uh, I oh. feel like... <laughs> Wait, no. Maybe we... not that, because it doesn't hide my face very well. We got, we got um, a whole lot of masks, actually, to choose from here. Uh, an arcane item that allows the trained user to see supernatural energies in great detail. Also affords some measure of protection against ghostly possession. Read me that one more time, I was fucking around with Roll20 tokens, I am sorry. Uh, an arcane item that allows the trained user to see supernatural energies in great detail. Also affords some measure of protection against ghostly possession. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming you're declaring that as an item. Yes. And fine just means that uh, for when I am... Uh, when any, whenever you see something that's labeled as fine, that means that it has an effect bonus to it. Um, effect hasn't been mattering so much because we haven't done a lot of stuff with clocks, but when a clock is involved, basically, think of it this way. Uh, when a clock is involved, typically when you do an action that affects that clock... Uh, assuming the standard, like, risky and standard, um, one tick of the clock will fill. When you go beyond standard effect, though, uh, which can happen if you have something like, say, a fine item, then, uh, we go from, um, standard effect to whatever the next step up from standard is. I forget the exact term right now. Um, but that would fill in two, um, ticks of the clock instead of just one. Um, okay. So it's basically just saying it's really good at what it's doing. But yeah, you're, you put on the mask, uh, you are declaring that as your item here. Uh, and I am going to pour Cecilia out of her bottle. Okay. She looks back at you. Betrayed me. Now hold on a second. I know you want revenge on Liz, and that's all well and good, but think about it. Why would you want her regular body when right over there I say pointing to the arrival house of the Wander Song? <laughs> there is a mansion full of bodies that can use magic and are much more powerful. Uh... I think you could survive a lot longer with access to those resources. Um... Go ahead and, um... One thing I will say you know is that all of the mansions are... ...protected pretty thoroughly with magical symbols themselves to not allow any ghostly intruders in. Uh, you're basically convincing a fly to, to walk towards one of those, like, shock traps. <laughs> Which I'm assuming you're fine with. Uh, I was thinking more like, wait until one of them is out of the territory and then try to possess them. Yeah, you could uh, you, you could see how that goes. Um, do you, do you want to? This is more Eliza's research experiment. Do you want to try to inform Cecilia of? Yes. The um, that would probably be it too, and I'm assuming you want to go with. Yes. Uh, risky and standard? Yes. Um, I'll say 
she flies off, you're pretty sure she got the memo. Eliza's pretty happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you walk back? Yeah, I'll go back to the boat now. <laughs> okay. All right. I feel like that is going to call it for that, and now we just need to do our uh, downtime and uh, getting our coin. So, uh, we finished the score. So now what we're going to do here... Always forget the part of the PDF for this is uh, coin and stash. Okay. Oh, well, this is not here. It is either. Sorry, everyone. I'm just trying to find exactly where this is. Payoff. There we go, that's what I was looking for. Okay, so the crew earns coin based on the nature of the operation and or any loot that they seized. So, um, well, first of all, before we do that, we gotta do our rep. So, what happened here is that the gun choir uh, are actually gonna gain a pretty good chunk of rep because we earn two by default and then plus one for every tier higher. So we're going to actually gain four here, because this was a tier two squad that we went, or a faction that we went up against. So we now have six rep out of seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Out of twelve, we're halfway to becoming a tier one um, faction. Next step up. So, if, uh, yeah, we didn't keep the operation completely quiet, people know about us. The crew is going to earn coin based on the nature of the operation. Um, a minor job, a small job, a standard score. Um, I'm going to say this is a small job. Uh, it, I mean, you did loot her apartment, basically, is where your cash came out from this. And no one's, like, paying you, necessarily, which is usually how this works. Um, so I'm going to say that's four coin. Um, which will be four up front and then plus one, because we got coin in the vaults. Um... So, uh, most, oh yeah, that's right, um, uh, so we technically do need to pay the, the, uh, the administrator of the school to keep your operations hush-hush still, so that's gonna be minus one coin, because we're still under their thumb. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then we are going to do heat. Uh, zero heat, smooth and quiet, low exposure. Two heat, contained, standard exposure. Uh, four heat, loud and chaotic. Um, add one heat for a high-profile, well-connected target. One heat if the situation happened on hostile turf. One heat if you're at war. Nope. Two with killing. I think this was... Two heat just because you did cause a little bit of a commotion in the streets. It wasn't much, but you know, you basically kicked yeah. it, kicked in an apartment door and yelled at someone to come out of their thing in a busy commercial district. That's gonna raise some eyebrows. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we're we're at two heat now, which still is pretty low. So mm -hmm. don't have to worry about incarceration. Uh, now we just need to do entanglements. Um, so, our heat is 0 to 3, which means we are going to roll a dice. Uh, let's see. Uh, roll a number of dice equal to your wanted level, and our wanted level is 0, so we're going to roll 2 dice and keep the lowest result. 2d6, take the lowest. Five. 
Um, rivals or... Ooh, hold on, let's see here. Ooh, interesting. Um, <sighs> what? Boy. This is too dumb. I might have to do this one. Hold on. Um... A rogue spirit is drawn to you. Perhaps it's a past victim? Acquire the services of a whisper or railjack to attempt to destroy or banish it, or deal with it yourself. Oh no, does that mean Cecilia got mad? <laughs> yeah, I okay, so how I envisioned this happening, um, Eliza, <laughs> you're on your boat, <laughs> coming back, and then you suddenly notice that Cecilia's just literally following behind you. <laughs> Uh, is this something that we deal with next session, or...? Uh, this will be something that, uh, you have to deal with now. Um... Oh. Do you... What, what's, what's your plan here, Eliza? Do you want to try doing combat with this thing, capturing it, convincing it to leave you alone? What's your plan here? But Eliza's like... No, you want to possess... The witch. You tried to trick me! Uh, the ghost seems angry and about to get violent with you. No, uh, there wasn't a good opportunity. Uh, one thing you should note is you are literally by the place where basically the ghost police are. <laughs> Like, right. like, like this is their this is their island where all of the bloodhounds are. <laughs> yeah. Do I try parking and getting some help here? <laughs> uh, I think I'll just add another onto my load and say I have a fine lightning hook, which. I can use to, uh, a long two-handed pole with a loop of heavy wire at the end connected to an electroplasmic capacitor, suitable for grappling a spirit and dragging it into a spirit bottle. Okay. Uh, are you gonna try to yoink her back into a bottle? <laughs> yes. Okay, um... You know, I don't know if this is so much a tune. What do you think this would be for yoinking a spirit into the bottle? I have no clue. I feel like that would... I want to give you Prowl just so you have the 1D, but you don't. <laughs> it would probably be closer to finesse or skirmish based off of these description, I feel. Yeah. Uh... Um, but you can stress yourself to have one dice instead of zero if you want. Which... Uh... In my opinion, probably a good move. Yeah, I will stress myself. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll just roll. Finesse. Risky. Standard. One. Bonus dice. Um. I... Yeah. What did you get? Four. Four. Okay. Um, so I think what happens is you are going to successfully lock Cecilia back in uh, the bottle. Uh, this is now a hostile spirit that will, if you free her and she has the ability, she is gunning for you. Uh, possibly to like the same level as, as being upset by Liz. Yeah. You also don't need to necessarily keep the bottle, by the way, so... It's okay, I can perform experiments on it. Okay. Um... That's kinda fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I can That's me, you. the guy who's also done other fucked up things. You've committed more crimes tonight than I have. <laughs> 
So... Eliza hasn't technically done anything illegal this session, I don't think. Oh, you absolutely have. Letting out ghosts out of any sort of... First of all, keeping ghosts, big no-no. Letting ghosts out, even bigger no-no. Um, okay, yeah, I was thinking more in, like, real-life laws. <laughs> well, I mean, you blackmailed a gang leader into becoming your partner? And also, real-life law-wise, probably doesn't fly. Um, but... No one here is innocent. Um... So, uh, that handles that entanglement. Um, now the last thing we need to do, really, is do our downtime activities, then level everyone up. Does anyone know what they want to do for downtime? Hi, yes. Um, I have an angry spirit in a bottle. I would like to see if I can try to remove the ego from it and just kind of keep the uh, spiteful energy of it. Uh, okay, uh, that would probably be a six o'clock project. Uh, remove Cecilia's ego. Uh, do you want to try attuning to do that? Uh, yes. All right, go ahead, roll in the tune. Alright, rookie, standard, no bonus dice. Uh, there you go. Uh, you rolled a six. Um, and that is going to then give you three ticks, I believe. Alright. Um, at least I'm 95% sure how that works. Yes, three segments. You're halfway through Ruby's Cecilia's Ego. I would like to remind you, you also have a Travis McFadden doll commission that is three-fourths of the way complete. Yeah. Uh. I'm a bit more curious about the, uh... <laughs> Understandable. You have a new toy to play with. Yes, this isn't like any of my other dolls. Although I probably will have to visit those dolls sometime to remove stress, but we can save that for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so do you want to just try to do this, do a tune again? Yeah. Okay, go for it. Uh, Same thing. Position effect don't matter. Okay, and... So close. You will be able to, uh, next downtime activity, you want to do it, you will be able to, um, you will be able to, um, do a, do your thing. Um. Cool. Or you could spend one coin or one rep from the party if you want to just finish one of these, but I think maybe we should let everyone do their thing and then we can go back to see if we yeah. can finish anything up. Um, Chase or Amir, who wants to go next? Uh, I guess I, I know what I want. Okay, oh. you can go then. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So, uh, first, uh, I want to acquire assets. Okay. Um, I want the temporary use of a cohort, um, and, uh, this cohort will be someone who is or was a part of the uh, gloves um, in order to maybe do something with them like in a future session um. so <clears throat> you want to hmm okay I mean w downtime activity would be a good time to do that negotiate like do that negotiation to see if you could um uh -huh. do that now if you want to just see how that goes here. I mean, that could be a... Yeah. Um... I guess we could make that its own full session, too. It depends. But I, I could see that going either way. If you want to do acquire asset, and then... I mean, you could acquire asset, then use it for downtime, too, if you want. Um, I... Yeah. Um... Mm -hmm. Because I, I feel like the negotiating yeah. with the gold gloves could also be a long-term project in its own way, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm open to whatever you you all want to do with that. 
Like, how, how much do we want the gold gloves thing to be on screen versus off screen, essentially? I'm fine with either way, honestly. Yeah. Same. Because, okay, because my thought was, like, it's either, like, the golden gloves be, like, that's or, like, the thing, the mystery with, like, Elwood, because that's also, like, something I'm curious about. I yeah, don't know I one. feel like that could be. Do, do we want the all that fun stuff to be next session? Uh, if you want, yeah, yeah that sounds yeah, yeah, cool. That makes sense. We'll we'll have to tie this into we for a thieving group. We have done very little thieving and more in exploring the criminal underworld. So we'll have to mm. we'll we'll have to see how that goes. Um, we'll have to plan a we'll have to plan a heist of their uh, hideout. Yeah, or you, or yeah. Um, it's, yeah. The only thing yeah. we stole was, I mean, isn't a mausoleum. That's I stole a potion. I stole I a mean, potion. You, you looted Liz's whole apartment for, for money. Uh, yeah, Eliza. I didn't. also stole a, a potion, which. Yeah. I guess. How do I figure out what it is since it's the end of the session? Uh, we will figure that out during your downtime. Don't you worry. Um, okay. So, um. I think um, how do we how do we put this? Um, yeah, I guess then you'll acquire an asset. So you you wanted someone who works with the gold gloves that could talk to you or like be like. I mean, Ed would honestly yeah, like, be a good asset too to acquire. Right. Yeah. Th that I could guess, be your end. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, just make that, like, connection, like, stronger or, like, more direct, I, I yeah. guess. Yeah, I mean, his I cousin who was in the gold gloves died, we established, but still. Um, yeah. He, they're still like, probably friendly maybe with he them. Knows someone. Yeah, he, yeah. You, you have a feeling he's at least friendly with them. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'll write that down. Um, acquire asset. Um,. Add profit acquired asset for negotiating with gold gloves. And in fact, maybe what we could do is that in order to cool things over, maybe they want you to do a robbery or something. Uh, and then after, yeah. the part of the payment will be that they'll leave them alone. Yep. That would be a good way sense. to ha still have a robbery be part of our, our thieving... <laughs> campaign uh, while also yeah. doing what we set yeah, out yeah. to do. Um, Alright, you have one more downtime activity then. Uh, didn't I? Wait, is it is it two or three? Uh, two. It's just two. It's just two in Blades. Yeah, okay. Because we don't have vehicles yeah. to also worry about, which is why they had that three. Makes sense. Yeah, which is why they had three in Beam yeah. Saber. A lot more to keep yeah, track of. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh-huh. For sure. Um, uh, yeah, I'll train. I'll just train. Uh, get some prowess in again. Okay. So next time I can top that off. All right. Uh, then chase. You got two downtime activities. All right. I'm going to keep uh, training microwave. Okay. Um. What? How? Are you, how are you going to wrap up this dog's mastery of the blade? Uh, I'm going to fight him. Ooh, yeah. Roll a skirmish. Like, do you imagine your mom's just looking outside the window like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you fighting a dog with a nail bat? <laughs> yeah, I got a six. That's, that's a, that's a... <laughs> Virgil Battle 2 starts playing! <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, the way I imagine this dog, like, being able to fight, I'm thinking of it like a, like a, like a diamond dog thing, you know? Yeah. Um, Especially since we're doing like a thief thing, I'm I'm imagining it more as like a nimble, like quick kind of like assassin type thing. This know? this dog is a proficient wielder of knives now. Right. All right. Uh, dog combat. Trait. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I guess I'll train. Do we have do we we have bonus to train in one in in something right? I believe it's just prowess, but let me check the crew sheet just to make sure. Uh, yeah, it's just... It is just prowess. 
All right, then I'll train in prowess. Okay. All right, so that's everyone's downtime actions. Um, does anyone want to use coin or sacrifice one rep to have an additional action? Is everyone cool if I use a coin to get my distilled essence of hatred? That's fine. I'm cool with that. I don't got any use for coin right now. Yeah. Okay, so. Um... The only other thing... All right, yeah. Uh, you managed to uh, successfully remove the ego from this spirit. All right, I just have... I guess it's not really, like... Is it liquid? Uh, no, it is gas gaseous. All right, I just have a container of... Uh... Evil gas? Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I guess then we just need to level up, or d do XP. So, uh, 1 XP or, tw or or 2 XP if this happened a lot, or multiple times. Um, Eliza, we're going to start with you because we're on your character sheet. <laughs> um, okay. You addressed a challenge with knowledge or arcane power. I feel like that happened twice. Yeah. You expressed your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background. I mean, her main goal is just to see what happens when you fuck around with ghosts. I feel like she did a pretty good job of that. Yeah. Uh, you struggled with issues from your vice or traumas during the session. I don't believe so. No. All right, you are two points away from leveling up. Woo. Uh, Chase, we'll do you next. Uh, did you address a challenge with violence or co uh, coercion? Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. Did you do that twice? What are... I busted down a door, and then I forced myself through the witches to be able to uh, pick up potions. Yeah, I don't know so much if that's violence or coercion, but I, I'll give you the one for the door at least. Um, yeah. Um... You expressed your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background. You talked to your mom and uh, had yeah. Also, also, I I would make sure to spend very little money when um. Yeah, I'll give you when two. Uh, oh. when I'm do doing to the going to the shop. I'll I'll give you two with, for that one. Uh, you struggled with issues from your vice or traumas during the session. Uh, did I suffer from issues? I mean, I don't know I if you suffered. Really. Yeah, I don't think you suffered anything. You're also two away from leveling up. Nice. Uh, Amir. Mm hmm Did you address the challenge with calculation or conspiracy? I feel like I conspired with people. I feel like so you conspired with people a lot this session, both with Grandma and yeah. and with uh, your, your buddy Ed. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Did you address your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background? Yeah. Your heritage definitely yeah. came up. Yeah. Uh, sure did. Yeah, I'll give you the the one for that. Uh, did you struggle with issues from your vice or traumas? You absolutely did. <laughs> <laughs> no, I swear, I'm not. I'm not doing weed. I'm a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, you're you're all you're all two XP away from leveling up then. Nice. Um. Then the only thing we need to do is level up the crew, and then we're out of here. So, uh, did we execute a successful burglary, espionage, robbery, or sabotage operation? Was this espionage? Oh, um, some es a good amount of uh, espionage. I, I mean, you did burglar like burgle a place actually. So, yeah, it's, how generous are you feeling tonight? <laughs> Yeah. No, I mean, I think you did. You, I mean, you broke into a place and took their money. That's a burglary operation if I've ever heard one. He, he stole a potion. Yeah, so... You know what? Yeah, fuck mm -hmm. it. I'll give two. 
Um, did you contend with challenges above your current station? You absolutely did. Yeah, we talked with Grandma Agnes. Uh, you did you bolster your crew's reputation of strange? Of strange? Yeah, your 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 crew's reputation have... is that you're strange. Oh, we we have a lot of like awkward dialogue with people. <laughs> it, yeah. We did in broad daylight try to break down a door. Um, you I also did a girl with a baseball bat with a nail. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess I did that too. Um, you know what? I'm gonna mark two. I'm gonna mark two for that one. Um, <laughs> did we, and then finally, did we express the goals, drives, inner conflict, or essential nature of the crew? I absolutely feel like we did that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what our essential nature is, but I do definitely feel like we somehow expressed it. Yeah. Um that is a <laughs> yeah, that is a yeah. level up which I'm going to make a note of. I feel like we shouldn't do that without Dissy being here. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. for sure. Crew upgrade next session. Uh I wrote. Uh so that'll be two upgrade points that we get to use. Um which will be uh which will be nice. It'll, it'll be nice that we uh, we got that there. So, um, yeah. Other than that, I think that is going to be it for this session. I think this will this is going to be another two parter. In fact, I feel like a lot of them are going to be two parters yeah. if we keep up in this. <laughs> um, which is fine by me. I am having a blast making these, and I hope you guys are all having a fun time watching this. And you know, I hope all of you playing are having a good time too, because. Yeah. <laughs> this has been a hoot. Sure. Two sessions in so far. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. having a lot of fun. Yeah. God, yeah, no, this kicks ass. <laughs> okay. So, hopefully we'll have the full crew next week, if uh, everyone can make it. Schedules are always a pain in the ass. That's the one problem with playing tabletop games. Um, oh, yeah. For sure. It is a pain to get these scheduled, so. But that's the beautiful things about Blades. We can always play as long as we have at least three people around, so. Maybe if, if something really major is about to happen, we might hold off just and you know, it'll be nice to have everyone there. Um, but for at least getting the thing going here, I feel like it'll it's fine if someone has to dodge or duck out or whatever, so. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's going to be it then. Uh, have a good night, everyone, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Yep. Have a good one.